Just when you think you're safest, that's when you're in the most danger. When everything seems to fall into place, that's when it all falls apart. Oh, you may be relaxed now, but soon those angels on your shoulder will give way to inner demons. That's why meditation safety is so important. What? Oh, good. You found my cue cards. By the way, I uh, talked to Vanessa. Who? The station manager. This is public access. Nobody manages anything. Oh, I won't tell her that, but she said I could have the studio at five. That cuts my schedule in half. Oh, yeah. Must be some compromises. You can't make an omelet without eggs. Unless it's a vegan omelet. Those you can make without eggs. Would you like a vegan omelet? I'm going to make two vegan omelets. The trials of being an internet reviewer. Much like the trials of trying to run a public access show. We're not as glamorous as it seems. Our next tale shows what happens when delusions of grandeur collide with delusions of... reality. Is reality a delusion? Shut up. I give you... the reviewers. Count Thomas Howell, your host for this evening's festivities. Tonight we bring you a story of intrigue, locomotives, and a little slip, and a little slip, and little slippery, slimy creatures of the earth. Or some might call them the strap-ons of Satan. Others simply refer to them has snakes. Snakes on a train introduces us to two Mexican immigrants leaping the border into these United States. Their ticket to freedom lies aboard this megaton contraption of steel cages, drug dealers, and yup, and yup, fuck, and yuppie businessmen. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, my name's Andy. I'm not really a vampire, by the way. I, I play one on the internet. It was either that or a werewolf, and who wants to see a werewolf talk about movies? They smell funny, they shit all over the place. I mean, no one would take my opinion on movies seriously. Anyway, I read an article one time about people who do this kind of thing for a living, and it inspired me. It inspired me more than that guy who survived getting shot in the head and then completed a triathlon. I, I think it was a triathlon. Could have been figure skating, I'm, I'm not sure. Point is, he seemed like a cool guy. I want to be that guy. Except for the getting shot in the head part. I just want to be famous and inspiring. My roommate Jeff, he wanted it on the bandwagon too. Though I think my show's better. Just saying. <laughs> ah, this concludes our story of a hundred passengers. And 3,000 venomous vipers. Or if you'd prefer, 20 passengers and 100 garden snakes with internal rattlers. I am Count Thomas Howell saying, wakey, wakey, snakes and bakey. <laughs> yeah, let's see you try and top that, Jeff. Here. What's this? It's chapstick for when you kiss my ass after you see my video. <laughs> oh, you got it done? Why do you think you ever heard from me in five days? Fuck, oh, Jeff. I've been working on putting my video together, too. I just didn't realize how many days had gone by. I sit and answer phones all day. In my downtime, I just write scripts and plan what we're going to shoot at night. Do you think it's paid off? Not enough people review movies as vampires. What are you talking about? Just the other day I saw a sexy vampire review from Dust Till Dawn turn me on more than that foot fetish scene. No, no, see, they review vampire movies <laughs> as vampires. But I'm sure vampires watch other movies than just ones with vampires. 
I watch movies that don't feature white guys with beards. You refuse to watch that Kissinger movie because it had Ron Silver beardless in it. Okay, that was literally him betraying his roots. And that's something I got a problem with. I mean, but you know what I mean. I'm sure people want to know a vampire's opinion on something other than a bloodsucker movie. That's what I want to give them. You know? Why not look at the Asylum movies? You know, you're not really a vampire, right, Andy? What does that have to do with anything? You seem to be going off the idea that people are watching this because they want reviews from vampires. But what if a real vampire watches this? Wouldn't he be offended by your white face? Is it white face? I kind of thought it was dead face. Pale face? Wait, wasn't that a Dick Tracy villain? Wait, why am I not writing this down? This would be great banter for my show. Are you playing a vampire? I did that first, you asshole! <sighs> Calm down, little Richard. You're gonna love this. It's a bright sunny day out here, which is exactly how these alien bastards will get you. Come in, come in. This is frequency 2.675432.1.789056.312. I'm gonna need backup on Space Station Z Cobra. I'm on a distant planet where bright sunlight is deadly to humans. Greetings, Earthling. I am Lord Penis from the planet Ass. <laughs> how did you know my name was Steve? I come bearing gifts, and you have chosen door number two. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, oh, stench! Oh, my one weakness! Steve! Admiral Akbar, what are you doing here? It's a trap! Then it is, Admiral Akbar. It's a good thing you've already emptied your bowels, cause you're about to get a treatment of laser eye buggery. You'll never get away with this, Space Lancer Steve. That's where you're wrong, cause I just played the space card. <laughs> Come in, headquarters. I'm ready for that rescue ship now. Give us, um, about 20 minutes? <laughs> Well, while we're waiting for the rescue ship to show up, let's talk about Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. Fucking wow. <laughs> yep. I knew you'd have that reaction. You combined sci-fi, movie reviewing, and plot elements. How did you do that? Andy, people don't care what we say for the reviews. Alright, they're more interested in how I'm going to bring back Lord Penis for future episodes. You get them hooked on a plot line, you... You wedge in the movie review, and BAM! The storyline brings them back for future episodes. <laughs> Especially when those future episodes literally take place in the future. I like that. I don't think I'm wrong when I say that you and I are going places, my friend. When he hits. I don't like playing the waiting game. We're not gonna be overnight successes, man. It's gonna take at least a week. I don't know if I can last a week. I, I want out of my job. I want out of it so bad. You know? There's plenty of people do this kind of thing for a living. You know? I watch movies. I know where to buy costumes. I can give my opinion on things. So, when's it gonna be my turn? Okay, all right, calm down. All right, look, you're up here. I want to need you down here. All right, and there's one surefire way to see if the right people are watching. What's that? It's if we have any haters yet. I don't want people to hate me. It's gonna happen. No, no, I'm allowed to hate on shit. That's my job, not somebody else's. Dude, any publicity is good publicity. Come here, come here, let me show you something. Okay, what do you think of this video? Just a cat going around meowing. 
Uh huh. And it also spawned this video. Hey, motherfuckers. So, there's this video going around the internet right now, and it's it's just a cat meowing. I mean, fuck that shit. If I want to hear something yowl like that, I'll track down the owner's mom and beat the shit out of her. I don't even think it's really the cat meowing. I think it's this dumb prick's wife getting fucked in the ass by the neighbor. And she's too ashamed to show her fat ass on the internet. So he had to dub her voice over the fucking cat. Jesus Christ, isn't this a little harsh? <laughs> it gets better. It just shows me that some fucking perv wants to fuck his cat. Is that what you want, internet? Cat fucking? Because I don't. I'm a man. And I fuck real pussy, not this feline pussy bullshit. If this sad sack of shit at least had had the balls to put his fat fuck of a wife on the screen, I'd at least be able to respect him. But as it, as it is, I can't even do that. This is the Rickhead. And I say it because you think it. What the fuck was that? That's the Rickhead. He says it because we think it. I wasn't thinking that. I wasn't thinking anything close to that. Doesn't matter. It's in your head now. And with the Rickhead's huge fan base, that brings even more attention to the cat video. More viewers means a larger demographic. From someone who thinks a cat owner wants to fuck his mom. You gotta expect this, dude. You can't give hatred on the internet and then not expect to get hatred back. You know, I, I don't want to be somebody who gets hate. You know? I don't want people thinking I've got some fat fuck of a wife. I want to be the messiah. Whoa, dude. Seriously. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The messiah is the number one personality on YouTube. If you're going to strive to be something, strive to be the best. But Andy, you can't just strive to be the messiah. All right? That's not how the messiah has become the internet's savior. Many people have tried to be like the messiah, but they forget one very important thing. And that is that the Messiah is the most talented man who has ever lived. And that's how he got to number one. Uh, you, uh, you want a bottle opener there, big guy? Hush, hush, I thought I heard you calling my name now. Hush. And now a reading from the association. Every time I think I'm the only one who's lonely, someone calls on me. And every now and then I spend my time in rhyme and verse and curse those faults in me. And then along comes Mary. Dude, this empty cup is as sweet as the fudge. My first guest actually does need an introduction because y'all don't remember who he is. It's Marcus from the hit 1989 movie, The Genius. Say hello to, I don't even remember this cat's name. Nick Pike. And I'm sure we'll all remember that. Am I supposed to be pretending the stock footage is actually there? You're on enough drugs right now. Don't tell me you don't see that stock footage right in front of you. Oh my god, it is so scary. <laughs> Let's cut the bull crap and just show everybody what they came to see. Nicholas Pike in his prime. Hey, you do remember my name. Don't feel too special. Here's a clip from the genius. I love the Roll Rocker. It so rocks. How did I know you were going to show that clip? Did you at least get to keep your rolling rocker? Nah, it was just a hollow piece of plastic. It didn't actually work. So in other words, it was like all the rolling rockers we all bought at the store. I guess so, man. I didn't buy one. But you could if you wanted to. Probably, yeah. Yeah, you were just a part of a team that suckered parents into buying their kids an inferior product that did the same thing as a piece of plywood. Yeah, that was my intent. It wasn't that I was just a child actor looking for anything to say yes to. It's that I was part of a devious marketing plan. He admitted it on National Internet. National Internet? It's kind of like national television, except you can say fuck. 
Oh, we can? Alright. Fuck you. Oh! Reach out in the darkness, my brother, and you may find a friend. That your shtick? Hippie Jesus spouting song lyrics? If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. How does that one make any goddamn sense in context to what we were talking about? I can't imagine why you haven't been getting work in the past. Who are you again? I'm Kirk Cameron. Nah, Kirk Cameron is more likable. 